Lots of presidents have vacation homes. Ronald Reagan had Rancho del Cielo in Santa Barbara, California. Uh, the first President Bush had the family's grand estate in Kennebunkport, Maine. The second President Bush, George W. Bush, had a vacation home in Crawford, Texas. Uh, it was often described as his home home uh, or his ranch, but it didn't have any animals, so it wasn't a ranch. And Mr. Bush only bought it when he started to run for president in 1999. And when his presidency was over, he bought a totally different house to live in in a rich suburb of Dallas. So it was more like a vacation home. A lot, a lot of presidents have vacation homes. But the Obama family uh, does not own a vacation home, which means that when they all go on vacation, they rent a place. Starting today, they are renting a place in Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts. Now, the Massachusetts Republican Party responded to this news of President Obama and his family visiting their state uh, with as much furious snark as they could muster. They released a sarcastic welcome message that starts, Dear Prezo... And then it trashes uh, President Obama for talking about the economy and for taking a bus tour through the Midwest and for having the general ideas, having the temerity to visit Massachusetts. Uh, the Republican Party's letter is then signed, the people of Massachusetts. As a reminder, here's the composition of the state legislature in Massachusetts. So the Republican Party of the state claiming that they can sign for all the people of that state is a bit of an overexcited stretch. Uh, but in the Massachusetts Republican Party's We Wish the President Wouldn't Vacation Here sarcastic letter, uh, it ends with this P.S. Uh, P.S. Aerosmith wants their tour bus back. Oh, touche! The Aerosmith tour bus! The Massachusetts Republican Party just nailed the Obama administration for using the Aerosmith tour bus, except the Aerosmith tour bus was actually the one that was used by the Bush administration when they sent President Bush's Treasury Sec Secretary and Labor Secretary and Commerce Secretary out on a six-city Midwest bus tour in July 2003 to give political speeches trying to build support for Bush tax cuts. They did actually rent out the Aerosmith tour bus for that Bush administration yay tax cuts tour. Quote, complete with black leather sofas and a mirrored ceiling. Ew. Uh, so Massachusetts Republican Party, while it is hilarious to mock public officials for taking the Aerosmith tour bus out on political tours, if Aerosmith is calling anybody in politics to get their bus back, they're calling Elaine Chow uh, and the Bush administration to get it back. For the record, the big black bus that President Obama was using this week in the Midwest was a purchase made by and a decision made by the United States Secret Service. The Secret Service bought two of these armored buses, one to be used by the president and one to be used by the Republican Party's eventual nominee on the campaign trail next year. Still, though, Carl Rove's American Crossroads group says, quote, we're going to make a star out of Obama's million dollar campaign bus. And then what when the Republican nominee uses it too? Seriously, what are you going to say then? I mean, self-righteousness about normal things presidents do um, is perhaps to be expected in any administration. But it has also gone sort of horribly wrong for another Massachusetts Republican this week, presidential frontrunner uh, Mitt Romney, who said this week that he did not think President Obama should be going to a place like Martha's Vineyard. He's going to be going on a vacation to Martha's Vineyard for 10 days. A lot of Democrats in Martha's Vineyard. I don't know why. But, uh, <laughs> uh, I wish the president were in Washington. This was not the only time that Mitt Romney said this this week. He, it was just sort of one of his themes this week. It's one of the things he kept hitting and over again. President Obama going to Martha's Vineyard, and that's bad. Mitt Romney making clear that this is no time to be going to Martha's Vineyard. He certainly wouldn't be going to Martha's Vineyard. While President Obama will be in Martha's Vineyard, Mitt Romney is also going to be in Martha's Vineyard. As noted here by the Boston Herald, Mr. Romney will be having a fundraiser in a very nice part of Martha's Vineyard across the island from the Obamas in a place called Edgartown. By this point in his presidency, after 31 months in office, Ronald Reagan had taken 112 vacation days. George W. Bush had taken 180. President Obama has taken 61. 61! Outrage! He's overworked! 
I know hypocrisy is the crime that has no punishment in politics. <laughs> I know that the Republican Party of Massachusetts denouncing President Obama for something President Bush actually did is not something they will feel embarrassed about. I know that Karl Rove attacking President Obama for a Secret Service decision that redounds to both parties is not something that he will feel embarrassed about. I know that Mitt Romney attacking President Obama for going to a place that he himself is also going is not something that Mitt Romney will feel embarrassed about. Hypocrisy, thy name is Thursday. I realize this is par for the political course. But when the criticism of a president for going on vacation or for riding in a Secret Service vehicle, for God's sakes, when the, when the criticism is this hypocritical, this easily, easily seen as hypocritical, is it the job of the Beltway Press to just write the criticism down and forward it to the American people without comment as if that counts as news? Or could maybe some context about the bare hypocrisy here help? Help me here. Joining us now to help me is Eugene Robinson, Pulitzer Prize winning columnist for the Washington Post and MSNBC contributor. Gene, can you help me with this? Take, take a deep breath. Look, you and me, we'll, we'll find the Aerosmith tour bus <laughs> and we'll take a trip. We'll take a nice drive and, and it'll be beautiful and be fine, right? <laughs> I, even though I trust you and love Eugene, I am not getting on a bus that has a mirrored ceiling and leather sofas. I'm just, oh. it's not going to happen. Darn. Okay. <laughs> I, I know that the criticism. I know that the criticism of the bus is stupid. But I'm wondering here if there is something salient in how brazenly stupid it is. I mean, does this reflect? <laughs> does this reflect sort of a new cockiness about being sure you'll never get called out for something? Uh, you know, but they're being called out for it, right? So I, th I think what it, it, it reflects what we've seen since uh, President Obama took office, which is attack, attack, attack on everything, 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 even if all other presidents did it, even if somebody else made the decision, attack him uh, and, uh, you know, just chip away, chip away. And, and frankly, they haven't mattered. It hasn't mattered yet uh, that you call them out on it and write, but it was a lie or but it was hypocritical. It, th that doesn't seem to penetrate. Look, look, if President Obama takes less vacation than recent Republicans have taken, a little bit more than than uh, than President Clinton did, he's in the kind of low medium range of vacation. Absolutely legitimate for him to take a vacation. And for Mitt Romney, who swans from mansion to mansion as a lifestyle to criticize him, or for Sarah Palin uh, to criticize him, uh, his work ethic after she quit as governor of Alaska. Uh, you know, halfway through her term because it was inconvenient. Uh, you know, that's that is. It, it must be Thursday. Yes, exactly. And that, it's exactly right. Hi hypocrisy. Thy name is Thursday. This is just how it goes. And I, I mean, I suppose I ask this question in one way or another on just about every show that I do, um, <laughs> provided we're not talking about nuclear power or something. But whenever we're talking about American politics, this is sort of always one of the baseline questions. Does hypocrisy ever hurt? Do you ever have your own credibility damaged, your own political capital damaged by flinging mud like this that you could not stand yourself by, 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 by doing what Mitt Romney's doing, for example, about Martha's Vineyard when he himself is going to be there? Well, you know, does it ever hurt? It, it probably does sometimes, but I think you'd have to conclude that as a general rule, you don't lose as much as potentially you gain by a hypocritical attack. So, yes, yeah, some people will realize, boy, that was really, you know, that, that, that was hypocritical. That was weird. I don't like that guy. But um, uh, other people won't get that follow up. And, and so I think the calculation is that you come out net ahead. Now, you know, on the more general vacation question, though, I, I think you could ask a legitimate political question about whether this vacation uh, has the right optics for this moment. But that's a different kind of question. Uh, and that's asking it, I think, in a different way. The um, Republican Congress under John Boehner, one of the changes they made to their own rules once Boehner took over was that they take a week off. They take a week vacation for every two weeks that they work. <laughs> um, Democrats have chosen to sort of leave this one on the cutting room floor. They have not chosen to take on the Congress uh, on this matter. Is this being is this sort of criticism of the president from all the Republican presidential candidates and from Republicans in Congress 
a sort of signal that, okay, it's time to go after John Boehner for the House Republicans' work ethic, or do Democrats sort of unilaterally disarm on this? You know, do Democrats unilaterally disarm? Boy, we've never seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> you know, why not? Why not go after Boehner for uh, the, for the, the congressional work ethic? Uh, I, I'd love to see that. I'd love to hear that. I'd love to have that in the next MSNBC contract. However, I don't see it coming, you know, one week <laughs> off or every two weeks on. You know, although you're giving me ideas, you are giving me ideas. <laughs> Eugene Robinson, Pulitzer Prize winning columnist for The Washington Post, MSNBC contributor. And man, I take it back, actually. I'd go on any bus tour with you anywhere, no matter how cheesy the bus. Anytime. Jane. Rev it up. All right. Pedal to the metal. Talk Indeed. to you later. <laughs> All right. Here is the website uh, for a brand new campaign fundraising thing called Make Us Great Again. Because campaign fundraising things like this must be independent from specific candidates, Make Us Great Again is clearly independent, right? No individual candidate there. Legally and clearly independent of the rule that says they have to be independent from specific candidates. How the Supreme Court has made great strides in American money laundering. That's ahead.